Next on the Broadway show, the doctor is in. We're hanging out with one of the greatest stars of Waitress, Drew Galing. Plus, becoming Liza, Krista Rodriguez is here to talk about her incredible transformation into Liza Minnelli in the Netflix series Halston. Plus, history has its eyes on Broadway. Miguel Cervantes sits down with us to talk about the emotional return of Hamilton. I'm Tamsin Fidel, and this is The Broadway Show. Some of Broadway's biggest shows are already back with a bang, and we love it so much. I'm Tamsin Fidel, but Broadway's got even more on tap. Winning superstar Sarah Bareilles helped reopen Broadway in September with the return of Waitress. But now another big name is stepping into the lead role of that musical. Jennifer Nettles, a Grammy winner in her own right, takes over as Jenna in Waitress October 19th. Nettles is perhaps best known as one half of the country music duo Sugarland. She made her Broadway debut in 2015 in Chicago. Of course, the whole cast of Waitress is incredible right now. Here's Charlie Cooper with the story. Thanks, Tamsin. Drew Galing is back for seconds as Dr. Pometer in Waitress. I met up with him here at the Barrymore Theater to discuss his return to the delicious role and so much more. So, Drew, thank you so much for joining us. Are you kidding me? Thanks for having me. Of course. So, of course, the curtains went up for Waitress a couple weeks ago. Yeah. You guys got a standing ovation. What was it like to hear that roar from the audience after coming back from such a long break? It was nuts. It was like ovations that night. I mean, that was one of those things where I think the, we were as excited as the audience was. We were as excited as we could possibly be to see each other. I think the, we had a standing ovation before the show even started, which I thought was premature because um, I wasn't even sure that I was going to remember my lines at that point. It was a little messy. and uh, But the fact that like everybody has been so starved in theater and now finally gets the chance to come back and, and, and welcome us back as we get to welcome audiences back has been yes. When people are so hungry for it, pardon the pun, but like, it is such a gift. And this show in particular really speaks to that. And we get to, the thing we get to be a part of every night is spectacular. You talk about remembering lines. For you, was getting back on stage and kind of getting it right, like riding a bike, or did you feel like kind of frazzled no. a little bit? No, because we're all new. I feel like after this past 18 months, we all kind of have come back completely different people, or the same people, but grown and, and changed in a lot of different ways. And to revisit something that I'd had such a long like experience with, but to get to kind of revisit it again through the lens of the past year and a half that we all have lived through together was really kind of beautiful, but it made it really scary to come back and do the show again because you don't feel, the, it doesn't feel the same. It feels like a completely new version of, of a thing that we know. Of course, you guys lost Nick Cordero during this time. Can you kind of talk about how the company is honoring his memory through the show? The hardest part about coming back was on the first day of rehearsal, uh, uh, Chris Fitzgerald and Eric Anderson and I all kind of looked at each other and couldn't help but feel like something was missing. But then we really quickly realized that he's with us every day because he was such an integral part of the creation of the, of the piece. And so what we've been able to do, and it's been, we've gotten a lot of um, people really excited about it. Uh, we've named a pie after him in the show and uh, have actually permanently altered a set piece of the diner uh, in the show in every company all over the world to include um, a big old slice of live your life pie. And as a person who sang that song every day for several months, this past year, um, it still gets me when uh, Sarah says it yeah. every night, and um, the audience responds in kind. It's be kind of, it's kind of become uh, a huge part of the heart of what this show is, and and I know that he'd be, he would, he would love it and make fun of it at the exact same time. <laughs>
Why should people come and see Waitress? Because this is a great step back into the world of theater. Seeing a show like Waitress, which is about rebirth and family and finding the best in yourself, given the circumstances that you're in, is I can't think of a better metaphor for theater, a better metaphor for life, a better score written in the past decade um, than to come to the Barrymore Theater and, and watch us make complete fools of ourselves on stage for two and a half hours. It's showtime. A whole lot of fans must have said his name three times because Beetlejuice is back from the dead. We thought we'd lost him for good. After the show was shuttered by COVID and forced out of the Winter Garden Theater to make room for Hugh Jackman's The Music Man. But the fan base definitely didn't want to see this truly hilarious show disappear, and Broadway was listening. So now Beetlejuice returns to Broadway in April 2022. The name's Craig, Daniel Craig. The James Bond superstar is coming back to Broadway next spring. Craig will star alongside Ruth Nega in a new production of Shakespeare's Macbeth. The show, by the way, will be produced by Barbara Broccoli, who's also a longtime producer of the 007 franchise. Preview performances of Macbeth begin in March, and tickets are already on sale, so check out Broadway.com. Krista Rodriguez is best known to us for her incredible roles on the Broadway stage, but during the shutdown, she played an icon of both the stage and screen in Halston on Netflix. It's wiser with a Z, not Lisa with an S, cause Lisa with an S goes not Z, it's Z instead of S, line instead of Lee, as simple as can be, see Liza, then M I double N, then E double L I, you double up the N, that's not new, then E double L, end it with an I, that's the way you say, Manelli, Liza Manelli. All on Torek is here with the story for us. As Liza Minnelli and the Netflix hit Halston, Krista Rodriguez is bringing a true stage and screen icon to life. Krista is quite the Broadway star herself, having appeared in seven shows. I recently met up with her to take a stroll through her resume. It's so good to see you. You and the, too. The, the I can't believe we get to like be here. waking up. Yes, right? absolutely. I know you're excited about that. We're all excited for Broadway to come back because you're yeah. a real Broadway girl. I'm a Broadway baby, as Broadway they like baby. to say. Broadway baby, now Netflix. Not a, I Netflix mean, you know. Netflix baby too. Netflix baby not. too, but only when I get to sing. <laughs> Eugene O'Neill Theater, this yes. is like, this is kind of where it all started, It is right? where it all started, yes. Your first Broadway show. My first Broadway show was Good Vibrations. You played Bikini Girl. I was Bikini, I understudied, I understudied <laughs> Bikini Girl. Yes. Um, who all. was Amanda Klutz, actually, was Bikini Girl. So she's like that perfect bikini thing, and then I would come in like Scrappy Bikini Girl. Scrappy, okay, so you think of her as Scrappy Bikini Girl. I do, yeah, yeah, if I'm bringing myself to the role. But yeah, I remember turning the corner on that street and seeing the marquee for the first time, and like being like, oh, this is real. Like you, you kind of understand it, but you don't really feel it until you see the marquee. And then, you know, that show was sort of a, I guess we'd call it a failure, wouldn't we? Yeah, we would. <laughs> and then, we, call it, we call it a flop. Yeah, it's a flop. But then I went back to school. Like, I didn't think I was going to do any more performing. And then I got Spring Awakening, which happened to be almost two years to the day in this theater. It kind of was a restart. It was a new Broadway debut. You're unique in that you have actually two productions of the same show on your resume. Yes. Because you got to return to Broadway in Spring Awakening and work with your great friends Michael Arden and Andy Meandus. Yes. At a very difficult time in your life. I mean, right. that was after your very public breast cancer diagnosis. What was it like returning to this theater in Spring Awakening? That feels like that must have been really special. It was. I mean, the show was special to me to begin with. And yeah. like, one of the roles that I understudied in the original was Ilsa. And people would ask me for years, what was your favorite role you've ever played? And I would say Ilsa, even though I only played it maybe 20 times, like it just stuck with me. So when Andy called me and he knew that I was going through chemo and he was like, Do you, what's your chemo schedule like? He's like, I think it'd be a good thing for you to keep your hands busy while you're in bed recovering from chemo sign to language. learn sign language. Yeah, class, yeah. So it was like great and it ended up he said, do you want to play Ilsa again? And I was like, that's like asking me if I was going to play Annie again. Like, I never, never thought I would be, I was 30. Like, you don't play Spring Awakening when you're 30, but we did. And, um, and then it moved to Broadway, and it was like, that show changed my life twice. The show in Feld Theater. Feld, yeah. You did one of my favorite, one of the most classic musicals ever. You were in a chorus line. Yeah. Did you play in a chorus line? I was BB. It's a show that can grow with you because there's so many diverse characters that you can 
join them on whatever phase of life you're in. So I was 23, playing 23. It was the first time I played my age. <laughs> I was always playing high school kids. And, um, and it felt like exactly who I was, like wide-eyed and ready to make it. And a couple years ago, I played Deanna Morales at the Hollywood Bowl. And that was like a completely different experience where I got to be, you know, where I really was in the business and like questioning some things or you're tired, but you know you love it and you have to do it. You were Wednesday Adams. Uh huh. That's such an iconic character. It is an iconic character. In the Adams family. Uh -huh. Which audiences went crazy. Critics did not go crazy not for it. Not crazy for it. Audiences no. absolutely went crazy. Which for is it. who we care about. We love to we love good exactly. audiences too. You've been one of the Broadway.com audience choice awards. I did, that's for right. That Highlight of my career. <laughs> one of my only awards ever, actually. Breakout well, performance. The fans chose. Thank you. So Thanks, what was that experience like doing that show? It was wild because I had never developed a show all the way from start to finish. Like when I was doing Spring Awakening, when I was doing In the Heights, I jumped in as the shows were moving to Broadway. So I was very used to just being like, oh, the, the quick version yeah. of it. And this was the long haul. And it was, you know, in, in the best ways, it's like everything you could imagine. It's also heartbreaking. You watch things get cut or changed or whatever. You see a show evolve and, and for better or for worse, sometimes that's great and sometimes it's not. But you get all of that, which is why it's a special experience. The Long Acre Theater. Yes. I love this part of your career because I was like, look, Krista Rodriguez is a star. You were the leading lady. I was. Talk yeah. about that show. It was. I loved that show. I had so much fun doing it, and Zach and I were like first date. Su first date. Yes. Zach. Zach, Zach Levi. And Zach I Levi. Were such good friends and collaborators. It's really great when you're co-star and you can like get in the weeds together and figure stuff out. And I think that led to a lot of chemistry on stage, which people really responded to. And it was just a short, it was a small little cast. So yeah. we each had our own dressing rooms and it was like a fun little summer camp thing. Like we were all bunking up at the Long Acre for the summer and it was really, really fun. And like, again, like seeing your name on the marquee is why this, that was a really wild one. And something I actually didn't really expect. I knew that Zach would have the big billing, but he was actually really, um, adamant that I have equal like standing with him because we were both on show in the show the whole time. The Richard Rogers Theater, you got to do in the Heights. Yes, yeah. I did. Yeah. It was actually a great thing because I was doing Chorus Line at the time and I wanted to be in the show, but I was still been in my contract with Chorus Line. And they were offered another theater for Heights and but they were gonna have to move after a certain amount of time. But then the Rogers opened where they wouldn't have to move, but they pushed their opening, which meant I could do the show. Ah. So the fact that it was in the Richard Rogers is why I got to be in In the Heights. The other reason why I love this theater is because this is the only theater that both you and Liza Minnelli have performed yes. at on Broadway. Yes. And you are having this amazing moment right now in doing a Liza on moment. Netflix, which I loved, Thank I adored you. it. How scary was it to take on the role of Liza Minnelli? I'm like scared even hearing you ask me that question. Like, it's still, I can't believe it happened. I can't believe I did it. I can't believe people are watching it. Like, none of it is believable to me. When you watch documentaries about Halston, Eliza talks about him. Yeah. She's very careful about what she says, and you can you can sense a real care in how she wants his legacy to be preserved in his name. And I actually felt the same thing from your performance Thank as you. Liza. I felt like you were doing that for her. It was in my research, actually, and, and I did a lot of work with the director, Dan Minahan. We like worked on what was sort of the, what I keep saying, the calibration of where she was and who she was at, at any given time. And one of the things that I found in my research was that I had only known Liza as Liza. Yeah. And there is a lot of evidence of her before that. Yeah. And she is actually quite still. She is very subtle. Any performance she does, like when she's doing her first musicals, she never blinks. Like, go back and watch Liza when she's in her 20s. She never blinks. She is like the stillest face. She's not mugging. She's not pulling anything. She is really honoring every text that she's singing. And so that was a big realization for me, is that she she was a real performer. I've, I've just gotten so used to the copy of the copy of the copy to get back to who she actually was and what her dreams were for her career was really inspiring to me. Coming up, Hamilton was one of the biggest shows to reopen Broadway. The energy in the room when the $10 founding father came back was unlike anything we've seen before. Miguel Cervantes sits down with us to talk about the emotional return of Hamilton. I'm Tamsin Fidel, and this is The Broadway Show.
Miguel Cervantes has a history with Hamilton, a veteran of more than 1,200 performances in the Chicago production. And in fact, he just stepped into the title role on Broadway when theaters went dark. Now he's back and savoring every single moment. Charlie Cooper sat down with Miguel at one of the theater district's hottest restaurants, Bon 45. What are you most looking forward to for the first night back? Well, let me tell, I'm gonna tell you a story, right? So I was in the Broadway company in 2016, before I went to Chicago, and I got to see Lin-Manuel Miranda do his last performance. When he came out, Alexander Hamilton, it was just unbelievable, the, the, the way that the, the audience erupted, right? And I thought, that's really cool. And then we opened Chicago, and there was this sort of eruption of the Chicago opening. And then we closed Chicago, and there was this eruption of, 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 of joy and the sound because we were closing the show. And I thought, that will never happen again. I'll join the Broadway company, it'll just be the next guy playing Hamilton, and we'll just, on we go. And then when I leave the company sometime, it'll just be the next guy. So it, those sort of things, those sort of milestones don't really happen. Now, it's happening again. We will have this moment, and it'll be for Hamilton, it'll be for Broadway, It'll be for the world, it'll be for New York City, it'll be for lots of different reasons that there's this, you know, dun, da, 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 dun, dun. and then when I come out, I know there's gonna be this ovation. And it's not for me, you know what I mean? It's not for me, it's for the, the idea that we are back, we're here and we're returning. And I get goosebumps even thinking about it, I'm like getting all emotional. And I think that's what I'm looking forward to the most, is the emotion that we will all feel, like we are gonna, us, the audience, everyone will be sharing in this, you know, sharing in the emotion of the moment. Do you miss the round of applause? Like, you've been gone for a while. Are you like, every night, are you like, I want to hear that again? I mean, as look, silly as that sounds. You know, there, there is, I, I talk about this a lot in terms of people's jobs, right? You know, I, I have a great job. You know, I get to do this, make money, support my family, and I feel super lucky to be doing this job. There's lots of jobs in the world, you know, lawyers, dentists, accountants, whatever. And when they finish their job, people don't clap <laughs> at the end of their day. You know what I mean? But when I finish my job, people clap and I get to, you know, and it's not, yes, is there a part of me that's like, oh, it's beautiful to know uh, that there's, that there's, a, there's a, a, a joy that I bring, uh, that people are, are, are drawn to um, clap for me. But mostly what it is is I, the power that we have as actors to elicit emotion, right? To make them cry, to make them laugh, to make them clap. I mean, that's a superpower. This is a Broadway show, and we're back in a few. Nina LaFarga is a veteran of half a dozen Broadway shows, most recently Frozen. But you've probably also seen her in the movies and on TV in Smash, Fosse Verdon, and The Irishman, and so many more. We talked to Nina about why she's just gotta dance. Hi, I'm Nina LaFarga. I feel like as far as back as I can remember, I was always performing in some way. I'm half Cuban and half Trinidadian, and I grew up with most of my Cuban family, so it was a lot of music, a lot of singing and stuff at family parties, and so from very young, I started casually performing at home. I really think I had a friend at school that went to dance class, and I remember thinking like, oh, that sounds cool, and so they enrolled me in the local dance studio. I started taking dance when I was seven, and that's kind of where the training began. I just thrived, like I just lit up as a kid and you know, you could take me off the stage. We didn't really make it to New York to watch musicals uh, very much when I was really young. But then once I got to New York and I saw friends that were in Aida at the time and I was like, oh, this choreography is awesome. It was the first time I thought oh, I could do this. I feel very grateful. Everything I've done has been something that I really felt like drawn to and passionate about. We work really hard. I think people see the glitz and the glam of it and perhaps we, we make it look easy because that's our job. It takes a lot of work to make it look so easy and it means so much to us. It's a great, great blessing, really. I never take it for granted. And that's gonna do it for us. Until next week, I'm Tamsin Fidel and this is The Broadway Show.